here for okay, this go. moment and to come and to thank Her Majesty, regardless of the fact that they won't be able to be in, but just being here and being able to witness this historic moment. Now, what's going on right now is what's known as the committal ceremony at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, uh, Castle that is. The Queen passed away on uh, September 8th at 96 years of age. She ruled for over 70 years. Hurricane Fiona is slamming the island of Puerto Rico. Alexis Chris DeMeo has that story. The violent gusts and torrential downpours also knocking out power across the entire island on Sunday. The company in charge of running the island's power grid says it could take days to fully restore electricity. President Biden on Sunday approved an emergency declaration for Puerto Rico, freeing up FEMA funds to cover disaster relief efforts. The owner is now the third hurricane of this year's Atlantic hurricane season. Forecasters predict the storm could evolve into a Category 3 hurricane or worse. Chris DeMeo, Fox News. A private Orthodox Jewish university in the Northeast has suspended all of its student club activity. Fox's Paul Stevens has more on the reason why. New York City's Yeshiva University suspending all club activity in the wake of a U.S. Supreme Court decision ordering the school to recognize from now an LGBTQ student group. A university emailed to students saying last week that the school will take steps to, quote, follow the roadmap provided by the U.S. Supreme Court to protect YU's religious freedom. A 5-4 to four vote last week lifting a temporary hold on a court order requiring Yeshiva to recognize the group even as a legal fight continues in New York courts. Conservative Chief Justice John Roberts and Justice Brett Kavanaugh siding with the court's three liberal justices. Paul Stevens, Fox News. A man was shot to death by Los Angeles police after answering his door while holding an airsoft rifle. Fox 11 Los Angeles' is Travis Weiss has the details on that. One man is dead after an officer involved shooting in South LA. LAPD says officers were responding to a family disturbance call near 102nd Street and South Grand Avenue when it happened. As officers arrived, a 19-year-old male exited one of the residents and he was holding a black rifle. At that time, there was an officer involved shooting. The 19-year-old man was pronounced dead on scene and the three-block section of the neighborhood was shut down most of the day as LAPD processed the shooting's aftermath. Detectives say the rifle doesn't appear to have the usual safety orange barrel for mock guns. The delay for processing the evidence comes from LAPD needing to wait for the coroner to attend to the body first. Meanwhile, no one else in the home during the domestic situation was harmed. Oxnard police have made an arrest in connection with the fatal shooting a week ago of a 14-year-old boy. Leonardo Gonzalez Jimenez of Oxnard had been standing near a bus stop in the 1300 block of South C Street on the night of September 12th, waiting for a relative to pick him up when he was gunned down. Oxnard police say that last night they arrested a 15-year-old Oxnard boy Juventino Meja for the fatal shooting, which they say was gang related. He was lodged in a juvenile hall on a murder charge. Now, under recent decisions by the California legislature and the state Supreme Court, Meja cannot be prosecuted as an adult. If convicted in juvenile court, the most he will receive is less than 10 years in juvenile custody. Ventura County jury on Friday convicted a man in connection with a shooting outside a tattoo parlor in Ventura last April that left three people wounded. But the panel found 26-year-old Landros June not guilty of the most serious charge against him, which was one count of attempted murder. Instead, they found him guilty on three counts of assault with a deadly weapon. They also found true several special allegations related to the incident on Sherwin Avenue. Meanwhile, June had earlier pleaded guilty in connection with other gun-related crimes that he had committed during the past couple of years. June was also convicted of committing most of his crimes while he was free on bail for other crimes. He remains in jail and scheduled to be sentenced on November 3rd. Friday's COVID-19 update for Ventura County showed 202 new cases since Tuesday, with 690 total current cases on Friday. The seven-day average case rate for 100,000 population continued to decline, and it stood at 13.6, with the seven-day positivity rate going down to 7.9 percent. Hospitalizations dropped from 55 to 44, with five patients in intensive care, and there were two new deaths reported on Friday. It is 837, Rich Galano, News Talk 1590, KVTA. And now, traffic. Are you checking out your traffic as you try to come through?
dark and on the one one heading downtown things are still a bit busy as you approach uh, Santa Clara Avenue. So the one one down from Santa Clara Avenue would slow and go to just before Springfield, northbound Pike, and Billy, right after Los Postes to Central Avenue. The one one eighteen heading to Santa Rosa Avenue. Right there, make up to the shoulder. There's activity up to the side, and you're going to see overall bright lights from about the Road. Uh, busy pocket of slowing coming through Simi Valley. The one one eighteen heading westbound at the Madero off ramp. There's a wreck there that's blocking some lanes. But you have slowing on the main lines from before First Street over to Madeira. Traffic is sponsored by Blindster. Do you need new blinds or shades? Blindster.com offers custom-made blind shades and shutters shipped directly to you at prices less than big box retailers. Blindster blinds are easy to install and guaranteed to fit. Don't ever pay for new blinds. Shop today and save big. Blindster.com. That's traffic. I'm Diana Olea. News Talk 1590 KTA. United States Deputy Sheriff's Association is America's largest non-governmental provider of services to law enforcement. For more information or to see how you can help, please visit www.usdeputy.org. Let's get back to the KVTA Morning Show with Spence. It burns your insides and it makes your eyes water. On News Talk 1590 KVTA. It's 839 here at News Talk 1590 KVTA. We're at Cal State University Channel Islands. Kim, good morning. Good morning, Phil. And we also have Dr. Sean Anderson on the line with us. And Doctor, I do believe there are students with you this morning. There are. They're, they're actually inside my classroom because uh, we have bad cell coverage. So they're, they're inside. I'm not on the deck, but yes, they are here. Okay, so they are here and hearing you emote on the air. This is very exciting. <laughs> I do, very believe, I do believe this is a first for the radio show. And kids, if you have books at 8.50, I am declaring a book drop. I want to hear them thudding against the tire. Okay. We're so virtual these days, they might have to speak because everything's electronic. But yeah, don't do it with your laptop. Don't do it you're, so old. you're so old. You're so old. Yes, I am. But we, we had books when, when I was. Yeah, we had tablets, yeah, that's why we were so buff, because we were yeah. working on the best in the tablets. All right, let's get into it here. Always one of our favorites here. It's great to have you on, Sean Anderson. Uh, so let's talk about, first of all, what's this grant that you've got uh, with another professor from UCLA? Tell us what that's all about. Yeah, so, so that, that's a, a cool new grant that we're, we're just spinning up. It's essentially to help provide guidance to the state of California to figure out how to do restoration, how to do ecological recovery um, in more effective ways. So generally speaking, when we do something, put a road through a wetland or, or have something of that nature, generally what we want to do is if we mess up that wetland, we want to make more wetland. Um, the problem is increasingly with things on the coast in particular, when it comes to things like climate change, um, as the seas are rising, there might be fewer areas to put a beach in if we, if we did something to damage the beach. So the question is, what do we do when we can't make more beach? And, and so the, the technical term is called uh, off-site, meaning maybe not at the exact site where the damage happens, or, or out of kind, um, uh, meaning uh, do something other than a beach uh, in terms of what we would do. So for example, um, let's say we, we um, had to put in a new, a new uh, dock, a new pier, um, and we impacted some beach, maybe it's hard to make more beach, so maybe what we could do instead was um, maybe create an area to, uh, to nurse and, re and raise more birds or, or have um, bird eggs uh, fledge more successfully so that we don't have as much beach to have birds being made, but we could have more birds overall. So that kind of stuff. Right now, there's very clear legal guidance for if I screw up a wetland, what I have to do. But for these kinds of things, which are which are, um, uh, again, not exactly the same thing in exactly the same place. There's very few guideposts, there's very few guidelines. And so we're developing those for the state of California. So when you look at this environmental acts and deeds, how good are we basically on doing the good deeds for the bad acts? Are we catching up as a, uh, as a, as a nation and as a yeah. county? Yeah, great question. So overall, the, our county is doing fantastically well compared, uh, compared to the state speaking. Um, I would say that um, we are good at looking at the old impact and trying to deal with the old impact. We're less, less effective at sort of um, interpreting what's coming down the road and sort of getting ready for those things. So with all these things, 
it's way better to um, before you have the impact let's so let's sort of you know let, let's put a little more cash in the bank and have our bank account go up so when we take that withdrawal we take that hit um it you know it's, it's it's not it doesn't go down our bank account doesn't dip and we don't do that super well so i would say i would say that overall we've been doing really well especially in, in the county in the last several months so for example we've not had rolling blackouts by and large when, when we had those heat waves the last couple of weeks um and, and, and people were asked that hey you know flex alert you guys you know tone down your electrical usage we did that and we, we avoided the problem similarly in east county in particular where we have a lot of the watering restrictions either um, mostly just water one day a week um, most folks are doing that most folks are letting their lawns die most folks are starting to convert to native plants etc so so you know sometimes we get caught up in the what are we doing wrong but we're actually doing a lot right and and, and especially here in the church now and, and who is your partner from ucla uh well professor rich ambrose so he is um also a, a, a scholar of the coast and and has spent many many years thinking about ecological restoration so we've done various projects over the years starting in actually way back when when i was at ucsb and he was at ucsb back in the dark age when i was undergrad and he was and he was a researcher so i've been working with him for about a, a thousand years roughly give or take uh, so far you um, actually so, had books back then Craig. it's true it's true and they would bang when you drop them on the ground back then. well those, those more rock tablets they would kind of crack when they would hit the ground but, but yeah same idea so anyway so, so he's, he's a fantastic guy we've also worked on several uh, guidance documents for the state of california over the years most recently one that is influencing us in, in um, ventura county here is um a, a guidance for what's called once through cooling so for our power plants that suck in the seawater and then pass it through something a filter or whatever to typically to cool um uh the uh the the, the the heat that's generated from that power plant and then pass out to the sea we created some guidelines guidance for um, how people should mitigate for that to, to reduce the, the impact of that Professor of Environmental Science, Sean Anderson from Cal State University Channel Islands online with us. You know, over the many, many years, I've seen bumper stickers like Save the Whales, uh, I've Save seen. the Redwoods. I've never seen one that says Save the Salt Marshes. Well, yeah, Why should I care? Way. Why should I care? Oh my God, you should totally care. So, so salt marshes, so if we talk about what used to be here back in the day, say 150 years ago, let's, let's talk about when um, uh, you know, California became a state, right? Um, right now, compared to what it was back then, we've lost 91 percent of the wetlands that used to exist. Those nine percent that remain here um, are mostly tweaked, are mostly um, um, damaged in some way, shape, or form. So we're not talking about, hey, we want to save, you know, another big chunk of oak trees, another big. Chunk. We're talking about something that's very precious and has been rapidly disappearing. So the last couple of decades, we've held the line, but but we've really lost a tremendous amount. And, and those that 9% that does remain, super important for things like filtering out pollutants, super important for nurseries for certain fish and, and birds and things of that nature. And also um, the most, one of the most productive ecosystems uh, in California in terms of how much biomass is produced. So, so they give us all kinds of great services, protect us from storm surge, all that kind of good stuff, um, 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 deal with, help us moderate floods and things of that nature. But yet we've mostly destroyed um, the vast, the vast majority of things that that were in the state of wetlands that were in the state. So that's why we should care. And I would say that I I have seen those bumper stickers. They're not all the way across the state, but in certain areas, Huntington Beach, uh, Biona Wetland, Malibu Lagoon, those areas yeah, where, where we actually are working on recovery systems, you actually will see um, bumper stickers. But they're not as sexy as, as saying the whales. So yeah, they're, 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 there's something of that. Thing. And just one, I, I'm going to hit the brakes a little bit here. When we deal with desalination, I was talking yeah, to somebody yeah. about that. Don't we have a real huge issue that we get all this great water for, but then we have to put the salt back into the ocean, one would assume. And that yeah. that could create a, an environmental concern of its own. Sure, absolutely. So there's, there's no free lunch. The one thing yeah. we know is that, that everything has some kind of downside. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. However, um, uh, given all the other downsides of not having water at all, Right, uh, so that's something yeah. we can what we need to deal with. So, so diesel has a lot of problems. It's very energy intensive. Yeah. It produces that brine you're talking about. But we, but there actually are things we can do to take those impacts down and to minimize those. And and the most recent um, big kerfuffle on the project down south that was um, 
voted down, the Poseidon plant was voted, voted down, um, that was an example of a desal project that was done very poorly, very, very poorly. We can do desal smartly, but we can do desal lamely. A great example, Seawell, which is um, a, a startup in Santa Barbara, um, those folks have been working on this for some time. They're getting close to the point, some of their first small modular desal plants floating out in the ocean off of Vandenberg. And so those little things are modular. Each one of those units can provide about enough water to serve about 5,000 homes or so. And so the idea is they can be, we can plug and play them eventually. And if we have a disaster, if we have an earthquake or something and need water, we can sort of bring those things in. Um, and again, as long as we're, we're interpret or, or planning for those impacts, we can take care of them. Um, and, and more detail has to be part of the picture as we go forward with our water supply. Your class is doing a public opinion poll. What is the poll? Yeah, they are. They are. So they're, they're floating around the county in, in LA, Ventura, Santa Barbara, and they're um, talking to folks and, um, and, and getting folks to fill out an anonymous poll where we basically assess, like, hey, so, so what do you think about these things? What do you think about, for example, um, the, the new policy of the state to, to allow Diablo Canyon to continue to operate past its, its supposedly closed down date of 2025? Um, and, and so we're curious, how do people think about that? So rather than have me tell my students what people think, they go out and, and figure out what people think directly. Awesome. Hell no, we won't glow. That was a shirt I wore way back then. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. glowing is not always desired. Maybe Halloween, but you know, other than that, not, not, not year round. Certainly right. not. Uh, okay. I, 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 it's 30 seconds to book drop. 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Wait, hold on. Let me go get a TikTok. I'm going to go tell me my side. So we also have uh, other research that is being done in the classes and getting the kids out there, getting the kids doing it. Okay, all the kids are coming outside. But stay cool, my friend. We don't have that kind of money to have three working doors. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, you gotta put the money where you need it the most. And right now we are looking at uh, other research that the students are involved with. What, what, what else are they doing? They're doing all kinds of stuff. So I, so I, we have students doing, um, so we just had Coastal Clean Up Day. Right? We just had folks all around the state, actually all around the nation. Um, cleaning up stuff. And so one of the things we're looking at is I have a group of students looking at uh, fingerprinting the, the plastics and figuring out what the what what those compounds are on our beaches and things of that nature. Have students looking at um, uh, all manner of stuff from from uh, endangered species to how to be more sustainable to what plants we'd be planting. We're looking at the effects of drought, all kinds of stuff. So I have, I have we have a, a large focus on rest on research here in our program and and constant numbers of students constantly plugging into all kinds of awesome projects. And that's uh, excellent work you're doing there with the students. Professor of Environmental Science, uh, Sean Anderson, thank you so much for joining us. It's always great to have you. Everybody's here, everybody's here, loud. Everybody's here. That is awesome, they are actually here. Students at Cal State University Channel Islands, you got a heck of an instructor there, kids. Pay attention. Uh, so Kim, let's uh, yeah. move on to other things that are happening on the campus. Oh, I didn't hear any books oh, yeah. drop, so. So, oh, yeah, no, they'll be dropping laptops. Probably didn't do that. <laughs> a reminder that South State San Islands are celebrating its 20th anniversary all year. And the public is going to be brought up by the John Four Group Library to see a second 20th anniversary exhibit that spans all the way from 1965 when Senator Robert Lacanacino co-authored a bill calling for a four-year public university. Uh, all of our students probably will not even born yet. Uh, that would be through the transfer of Cambria State Hospital property in 1997, all the way through the first couple of thirty, and the university opening on 2002 of 2022, when on Friday, this Friday, we hold an investiture ceremony formally recognizing the fourth president of CSUCI, Dr. Richard Yao. The ceremony begins in front of the library at 10 30 Friday. Big doing this year at Cal State LA. Sounds great, Kim. As always, thank you for the great interview with Professor of Environmental Science, Sean Anderson. We'll catch you again next Monday. Thank you. Already. Thank you. For News Talk 1590 KBTA, we are at 8.52. We are winding down here, folks. Six more minutes to make a bid.